Now we introduce the method to solve linear congruence equations in the form of AX congruent to B mod M. Now we're going to go over three typical examples as listed here. We will walk through the example earlier so that you know all the details in order to solve other linear congruence equation. Before we go into details, let's go for some high level facts without the proof. Now m is a positive integer, we try to solve this equation. If the GCD of the modulus and the coefficient a divides b, then there's a solution. Otherwise, there are no solutions. And a special case is when a and m are relative prime. For that case, there's an important property that there exists integer x and y such that ax plus my equal to 1 and the method of finding that is Euclidean algorithm. Let's try to solve the earlier problems and let's start from the basics. We try to solve for ax congruent to b and mod m. Now in the case where a and m is relative prime. So that's the first case. The other case is a and m has a common factor which is d where d is greater than 1. For the first case there is an important theorem that is the equation here always have a solution. There is a famous theorem saying that if two numbers are ready to prime then there exists some integer x and y such that the linear combination here ax plus my equal to 1. How do we find x and y? There is what is called Euclidean algorithm. So let's go through an example here. Mod 337, we try to solve the equation here a is 256 and b is 179. These two numbers are co-prime. So that is a and m, in this case is 256 and 337, they're relative prime. There exists x and y, but how do we find it? That's what is called Euclidean algorithm. The way to find it is you're going to express 337, the bigger number, in terms of the smaller number, in this case times 1, plus the remainder here is going to be 81. Now you can do always take the remainder r with the smaller number here, right, 256. So let's do that. So the second step is 256 is equal 81, multiply a vector plus another r. So here, the number here would be 3, all right, let's plug in 3, and r in this case is 13. Now this time we're going to use 81 and 13, and it's going to be 13 times another number here. This is going to be, try to 6, right, the 78, and plus 3. The remainder is 3, and the smaller number is 13. In the next step, we're going to use 13 and 3 times something plus something, right? So here, that's 4. The remainder here is 1. So what we have done here, that's called Euclidean algorithm. Now, how do we find x and y here? So you work backwards, kind of from 1 here. Let's do that. So 1 would going to be equal 13 minus 4 times 3. What is 3 here? You know the 3 here. So 3 in terms of 81 minus this one. Let's say 13 minus 4. And the 3 here is 81 minus 13 times 6. Let's first combine with 13 here. So we have 13. And we have 4 times 6 times 13. 13 times... 4 times 6, 24, plus 1 is 25. So it's 25, and the minus 4 times 81. Further, 13 is equal 256 minus this. So let's plug in 256, 
minus 81 times 3 times 25 minus 4 times 81. You have 256 times 25. And here you have 81, 3 times 25, 75. And minus 4 here, minus 79 times 81. For the 81, you're going to replace with 337 minus 256. So we have 256 times 25. 81 is 337 minus 256 times 1. So you're going to combine 256 here. So minus minus is plus, plus 79. So 25 plus 79, 256 times going to be 104 minus 79 times 337. We have found a linear combination of these two number with this would be x minus 79 would be y. So we have found this. So which means 256 times 104 is congruent to 1 mod 337. So that's uh, the meaning of this equation here, right? The original equation we try to solve is here, right? We try to solve this equation here. Now, in order to find x, you need to multiply 179 on both sides of this equation. So what you get is 256 times 179 times 104 would congruent to 179 and mod 337. Okay, that's directly from the early results of Euclidean algorithm, which means our x is going to be this part. So in other words, so that's a conclusion. So x is actually congruent to 179 times 104 and mod 337. Find the remainder here. So I skip the step. This is actually 81 mod 337. That's our solution. So recap. What we do is whenever you have this modulus and coefficient ready to prime, you use Euclidean algorithm to find out this relation here, right? X and Y. And then you express in the modulus. And for the quantity, you just multiply this by this quantity here, B. And then that's a solution. You simplify it by finding the remainder. And the final solution is 81 mod 337. What about the second case where the modulus and the coefficient here has a common factor? For example, so in this case, the coefficient 20 and 10, its common factor here is 10 is greater than 1. They are not ready prime. Now here, in order for this equation to have the solution, the quantity b here must also be multiple of 10. Why? Because this equation, it is equivalent to saying that 20x minus 7 would equal multiple of 10 where k is some integer. This is impossible in our case, so no solution here. Because 7 is not multiple of 10. Give another example. Let's say 12x congruent to 16 mod 20. Now, in this case, the GCD of 12 and 20 is equal to 4, and 4 indeed divides 16. So we claim that this equation has solutions. How do we find the solution? So this is equivalent to 12x equal 16 plus 20k, where k is some integer. Divide 4 on both sides of this equation. What you have is 3x equal 4 plus 5k. Now change to modulus equation here, 3x congruent to 4 mod 5. So in other words, 
we can turn this congruence equation into a new form where 3 and 5 ready to prime. Earlier, we know how to solve this problem, right? For the ready prime. So in this case, we solve it, which is 3 mod 5. Again, I, I skip the steps because this is a module is the first small, it's very easy to find. Yeah. Back to mod 20. So the x is going to be 3 plus 5k, where k is some integers. This x would satisfy the original equation. Now, if you want to express the solution in terms of mod 20, now in our case, we just uh, choose different value of k when k equals 0 x equals 3, when k equal to 1, x equal to 8, when k equal to 2, 13, k equal to 3, 18, and k equal to 4, that's greater than 20. So we stop right there. We have four solutions in terms of mod 20, or equivalently, this is a solution. Okay, both would be the correct answer. Try another example. The third example here. So here we say 1296x congruent to 1125 and modulus here 1935. The big numbers. Notice that they have multiple of nines. GCD 1296 and 1935. And of course, 9 also divides 1125. Dg sum add up to 9, then it must be multiple of 9. So which means this has solutions. How do we find the solutions? As we did earlier, we need to divide 9 on both sides. So it's equivalently, we try to solve this equation here, which is 144x congruent to 125 and the mod to 15. 1125. Yeah is 9 times 125 and 1935 9 times 215 1296 is 9 times 144 they are relative prime go back to case number one euclidean algorithm here so the big number is 215 is equal to 144 times is 1 the remainder 71. We use a smaller number here, 144 is going to be 71. You can times 2 plus 2. So this time you have 71 and 2. 71 equal 2 times 35 plus 1. We need to express 1 in terms of original number 144 and 215. Just use back substitution, go backwards. Here 1 would equal 71 minus 2 times 35. Here 2, replace 2 here with 144 and 71. Equal 71 minus 144 minus 71 times 2 and then times 35. You have to combine 71 here, right? So equal 71 times negative negative, that's positive. 2 times 35, 70. And there's 1 here. So it's 71 times 71 minus 144 times 35. You replace 71 with 215 minus 144. So 71 is 215 minus 144 times 1. And then times 71 minus 144 times 35. You combine 144 here, 215 times 71 minus 144, 71, and 35, 106. In terms of mod 215, so we would have negative 144 times 106 is congruent to 1. The equation we try to solve is this. So you want to change this to 125. So you multiply this both sides by 125. That is 144 times negative 106 times 125 would congruent to 125 mod 215 x 
is congruent to negative 106 times 125 congruent to 80 mod 215. So that's the solution. Look at the original equation, however, that's a different modulus, right? Is mod 1935, which is nine times the current modulus. So usually it means we have nine different solutions. Let's figure that out. The trick here is to understand that this is going to be 80 plus multiple of 215 times k. So you let k equal 0, you get 80. k equal to 1, that's 295. And k equal to 2, so this will be 510. And k equal to 3, that's going to be 725. That will be 940. And so on and so forth. I'm going to skip the steps. So we have nine different solutions here. And that would be mod 1935. That's the solution. As a review for the final example, which is very typical, the first thing we do is to figure out the GCD, the GCD of A and M, which is 9 in our case. What do we do? We divide the original equation by 9, have this new equation to solve, and then we use Euclidean algorithm to find out x naught and y naught, and then we turn that into a congruence relation. From there, we solve the original equation by multiply 125. The answer is 80. And then in the final step, we need to find nine different solutions in the original modulus, in the modulus 1935. If you master the three examples that we introduced today, I'm sure you can solve any other similar problems for the linear congruence equations. For these and other interesting math problems, please like, share, and subscribe to the channel.